Hi, this is Nadia Komonich. Welcome to Gold Meet Golden number eight. I'm here in Oklahoma in my house, and I'm looking forward to talk with a dear, dear friend that's been my co-host for the event from the beginning, Miss Nicole Kidman. Hi, Nadia. Hi, Nicole. Welcome to my house. The yes. <laughs> I, my daughters would love that house. Um, they both do gymnastics. Oh, so, really? Yeah, so I'm so excited to talk to you. Um, I'm a huge fan of you. Thank and, you. I'm and, a huge fan. And just sports. I love sports, but I particularly love gymnastics. And now watching um, my children learn it, I realize how, I mean, I was never able to do any of it. So my big thing for you is, is um, how do you balance excellence with perfection uh i have i had to discover myself what my limitation is and the only way i know myself is by trying and trying and challenging myself each day to be a little better and try to be a little faster than anybody else because when i think about the perfect 10 from the olympics mm -hmm. uh, i look at that and you know i've done so many repetitions but, um, and I thought I did pretty good. I didn't expect to get a 10 because <laughs> ev even you though- You deserve the 10. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Even though I've done so many times the same routine, each time feels different, even mm -hmm. though it looks the same from outside. Yeah. So, uh, you know what I mean? So it, probably for you too, you do so many repetitions for one take and you feel different. Mm -hmm. And the people from outside can say, this is a, was a great one. And you may say, no, I think I can do better. Yeah, I think um, for me, perfection is not something that we try to achieve in, in, as an artist, as an actor, because we don't get judged in that way um, that you do. Um, so that's why I was interested in, in, you know, when you feel that it was perfect and then the judges feel that it wasn't, you know, those grappling with those emotions are interesting to me. Um, also, obviously, it's been a really tough time for athletes, um, particularly with leading up to the Olympics. Have I mean, what is your advice to the athletes that are heading off to Tokyo, um, particularly the gymnasts who have been training and then had that taken away and are now heading there again? It's just been such an, a, a, an awful time for, for people. Um, but I would think particularly for athletes that have a window of time to perform. Yeah, there, uh, for some who are at the end of their career and they mm -hmm. just wanted to check the box for 2020, mm -hmm. one year is a long time. Mm -hmm. For others who are waiting to be for their first opportunity to be in the Olympics, yeah. uh, it, it may not be as long, you know, because it's their first shot. And also uh, we have to take in consideration that many gymnasts who didn't qualify because they didn't have the age last year, they do have the age this year. Wow. So you have to look at who will actually be able to fit in that team. Wow. Yeah, I didn't even think so, of that. So complicated. Uh, yeah, a lot of things have to be taken in consideration. And, yes. you know, for when you look at Simone, Simone yeah. actually said that uh, she was waiting to check the box last year. And now she's like, one more year? What do you mean? But what can you do? You have to look at the fact that I'm training for this. This was my goal. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to take it a day at a time mm -hmm. to be able to be healthy and to just accomplish each day a little bit and the time mm. will come because there's nothing else you can do. You can't think too far. Which is a great um, uh, antidote for everybody. I mean, the, to approach life. My yeah. husband and I were just having a conversation about what we're gonna do in three months. And it's like, well, we still don't know. And we're still, and I think that sort of not knowing and not being able to make solid plans and all those, um, just the, the way in which, everything is still so um, in limbo is what's um, yes. really, really hard to, but that's why I'm just fascinated with an athlete and how they um, mentally, how they cope with the pressure and that sort of goalpost being moved all the time. Um, 
Yes, because think about the Olympics are set, set, set every four yeah. years, and you know exactly when they will be. Yeah. And you know exactly. how to, you know, move your, you know, the routines and what you need to learn to be able to pick at that particular time. We usually go to every Olympics, you know, because we do some work there and I'm also in the commission of the IOC and yeah. I may be able, I don't know yet, but mm. I may be able to go to do some kind of work, mm. but I still don't know. So, you know, I like to plan my things, you know, my, yes. and now it's like, I don't know what to do. I'm like, in yeah. a bubble. So uh, mm -hmm. I know you like to go too, and I know you like sports. Uh, and uh, I do. And you I are like a tennis. tennis. Yes, I love the no? tennis. I'm a big fan of. Um, I I love sports one because I love being in an audience watching as well. I love the um, camaraderie of sports. I've seen the benefits of. Um, um, my own children being able to master their bodies and I've seen the way in which sports can help to mentally um, really keep you calm um, and goal and their goals for certain things learning to um, manage their their expectations because I think exactly. expectations are such a huge you know it's it's very problematic now I'm always working on lowering my expectations for myself because I have this sense of oh my gosh I I really want to achieve excellence here and then at some point you just go just let it go you're going to do your best and that's all you can do and as it's long exactly. as I can, yeah and because but it's, it's still easy to say and hard to do which I would think you, when I was when I was when I was a child before mm. the Olympics yeah and I was at the airport with the entire team and yeah. the journalist came to me and said, what do you think you're going to do at the Olympics? And I said, talking about lowering, because it's much yeah. better to, to lower because everything else you do is going to be higher <laughs> than you expect. Yes. So I said, uh, I hope to win a medal and it is possible to be gold. And I did much more than that. So you mm. know what I mean? So that's mm -hmm. why I always was like that as a child. I grew up mm. like that. I said, I'll do the best as I can. And if mm -hmm. I did the best as I trained, then I'm happy with that. It doesn't matter what other people think about it. Yeah. And so I'm I sure think that's this is what the right way. Coaches say, right? They're always like, because they have to manage your um, emotions through the whole, um, through all of it. And I've seen them when they whisper, the coaches, when they say, don't worry. To, but the thing I love in gymnastics is when there's the group and the team working together and supporting each other. I see that and um, I'm like, wow, that really is um, genuine support. Um, everyone needs to do well. That's in when you're, um, that, that's a really fascinating thing as well because you have your individual and then you have your group in gymnastics. And that's interesting. Especially, I know what you're, uh, you're watching when the, one of the girls jumps on the bars and prepares yeah. the bars for the other one. Yeah. Think about how confident I, need to be on that girl that puts enough chalk on the bar so I don't mm -hmm. I don't slip her you know with the with the grips because yeah. you should, you know what I mean because you yeah. can do it you have to think about it but you have a girl who knows exactly how much water you need how much honey you need and how much chalk you need so wow. think There's about an enormous confidence. amount of trust there yes enormous amount of trust and belief in each other fantastic <laughs> well anytime you come to oklahoma please yes i am gonna try everything grateful. no I, I can barely do a handstand <laughs> um my children tease me about that yet my daughter's working on her aerials right now okay so yeah That's which good. is a big but it's a big thing for her and she's been she's she's really um been putting the time in and she really works hard on it and watching her do it and achieve it has been really um I've, I've just stood back and gone I have no idea how you're doing it but the determination so your determination and your sharing of your knowledge and your wisdom and your experience is just gorgeous Nadia so we all thank you for that thank you very much for everything you do <laughs> and for uh, motivating the women to be who they are. Yeah.
their authentic selves and support each other and give um, because the greatest thing you can do as a human being is is give and support I think so that's right work. so we yeah. will teach you a handstand <laughs> when you come to Oklahoma I need I need a lot of trust and a lot of support <laughs> you'll have that you'll have that you'll have that Thank you very much for everything you do. And I'm looking forward Thank to see you. you soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll come visit you and we'll all be watching Tokyo. So very excited about that. I hope you end up going there. So we'll see, right? We'll see. We'll all, yeah. But we say I send love to all of the athletes and all of the people hoping to participate in the Olympics. And, um, you know, they have our love and support from all around the world. I just want to say best of luck in Tokyo to all of the athletes that will be competing. Um, we are here with our hearts supporting you. And I'm so happy to be here on behalf of Gold Meets Golden, supporting Angel City Sports.